Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have arrived at the Red vs. Blue Season 13 Episode 1 through 4 batch for the final act of the Chorus Trilogy. I got my meta shirt on right now based on that fucking end credit scene, which has me so fucking hyped. I just finished uh, over the last couple of days. I finally finished my review of season 12. That shit's about two hours long. You've probably got already seen it. So I appreciate all of you guys who are interested in my thoughts, theories, speculations of this last season, uh, or rather of all of my thoughts of season 12 and all of the things that I'm looking forward to going into season 13. We are finally here. We are in the final act of the Chorus War. The people of Chorus, the Federalists, the New Republic have joined voice forces and have turned their attention on Malcolm Hargrove, who is not only the CEO of Caron Industries, but also the UNSC Oversight Subcommittee Chairperson, who has been playing this double agent for God knows how long of trying to use mercenaries space pirates alien tech to destroy the people of course slowly but surely so he has a planet for himself so he has all of the technology and things of that nature and he's basically just a corrupt businessman who had the audacity to fucking turn around and say all that shit to leonard and freaking chastise him and make him vil a villain in the public eye when he was doing shit worse it was just the fact that he didn't get caught and that shit pissed me off and i'm so happy that like church epsilon and carolina and washington are able to kind of carry this torch that has been burning since project freelancer started i'm so fucking happy that he made that dear chairman memo at the end of season 12 and he just kind of fucking gave it all to him and he was like sincerely yours the incredibly badass and sexually attractive reds and blues red and blue soldiers of project freelancer ps suck our balls so it's kind of like the will of Leonard, the will of Allison, the will of all of the uh, freelancers, AI, and everything that's been kind of embodying the story of Red versus Blue has come to this point. We still don't know what happened to the counselor. We don't know what he's done with Sheila in terms of maybe reprogramming her or um, uh, reverse engineering her as like an AI because, you know, he has her in his log system of, you know, dealing with his schedule and all that stuff and she sounded super dead inside and i was surprised that it was even the sheila that we know because the director ordered her to uh shut down you know to to delete herself but i know from the past it's been mentioned that it's cheaper to store an ai than it is to destroy it so i don't know if she didn't have enough time or if they managed to you know find a truncated or corrupt file of her and they reverse engineered it to be the sheila like to be a version of Sheila that we no longer recognize. I don't know how it's going to react or engage with the Reds and Blues or the Freelancers or even Epsilon. If there's any cross between that. The end credit scene also has like me wondering what the fuck is Main's armor, the Meta's armor. Uh, you know, it's being processed and stored in a trophy room. So I think that's just to stroke the ego of the UNSC chairperson because he's like, eh, at least it's something cool to kind of remember fond times. Um... So yeah, Felix and Locust, you got Felix, Locust, the space pirates, the resources of Caron Industries, the military, um, uh, the weapons, the equipment, the, uh, the weapons, the armor enhancements and abilities. He also has a lot of money and a lot of power and uh, word has gotten out on Chorus, but they have to spread it to a wider uh, to a wider um, ga galactic level in order for people to kind of know so that way he's brought to justice and his crimes are figured out. Um, I have no idea how this is going to be ushered and started, but this is the beginning of the war for Planet Chorus uh, at the end of the day. And uh, I'm super excited for it. I really hope you guys are as well. I really appreciate your guys' patience with me um, over the course of my stop and goes of Red vs. Blue. This is this is it. This is the end of a trilogy. This is the end of Miles' contribution, I think, for the most part, in terms of writing for Red vs. Blue. Um, he's done a fantastic job writing for Felix and Locus. I kind of broke down their characters extensively in my review of Season 12, where we got the betrayal and we got um, some kind of like early moments of their like backstory and kind of their personalities towards the end of season 12 and uh, i'm just super excited to see where this goes see what becomes of felix and locust see what becomes of malcolm what becomes of the reds and blues uh the people of chorus 
and uh, everything else in in between i know season 14 is an anthology so we're probably going to recalibrate when that comes into play and then season 15 kind of picks up i think where season 13 left off too with a new trilogy and a new story but we'll get to that when we when we when we cross it for now uh sit back relax uh leave your thoughts in the comments as always for your thoughts and anything that i've mentioned in this video but without further ado ladies and gentlemen we are going to be starting red versus blue season 13 episode one through four let us begin. So, I am super nervous right now. This is it, the beginning of the end of the Chorus Trilogy. This is a really lengthy batch, by the way. This is, like, I think beyond 30, like, 30 minutes plus. So, I just hope that I come out of this alive. I hope I'm, I come out of this contained. I hope I can contain my excitement, my hype. I'm seeing these characters again for the first time in a while. And, uh, I have no idea what they're gonna deliver. But, uh, I'm super excited. I cannot wait. We're starting with episodes one through four. So like I mentioned, please leave any of your thoughts in the comments down below. And we're going to be starting this in three, two, one, now. Oh. Oh. Oh, is that a signal? Contact, perhaps? Oh, are they trying to get a signal out? <laughs> Whose ship is that? This is a random ship in space? There she is. Oh. Unidentified Pelican dropship. Oh. This is Captain Mayers of the UNSC Tartarus. Oh, the UNSC! Tartarus. Come in, over. Is this Malcolm's ship? Present Unidentified day. Unidentified Pelican, please respond. Whoa. Eh, comms are acting kind of funny. Maybe uh -oh. they can't hear us? Or maybe they fall wow. asleep in Oh, the it room. is! Oh, Malcolm's over there! Okay! Whoa! Malcolm, can you just give us a sign? More animation! <gasps> oh, hey! She lives! Whoa! Pelican, are you able to make your way to our starboard docking bay? We'll be able to assist you from there. What is this? What's going on? Well, there you go. Stasny, meet up with Blanton and Kilgore and die. What's Malcolm talking See about? What this is all about. Wait, how the hell Hargrove, we are yes? still at war. What two flashes means yes, and one flash means stay <gasps> away. Alien zombies. Oh shit. Whoa! You were saying. Okay, he's coming around. He's coming around. Fine. I'm like super nervous right now. Sucks this is like so reminds me of Project Freelancer. Prepare ourselves for whatever may come next. This is present day? Whoa! What the fuck? Oh, is this like a prison a prison holding station? What the fuck? Just picking up what I hope This is present day, so this must be during like whatever's currently going on with the uh... Ooh. Who is that? Who is that? Come on, Stas, hurry up. It's just weird. I don't understand the context of this. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's some top secret covert ops. Some hush hush. Oh, I love the animation. Yeah, and for so lucky, Project Freelancer. Keep this quiet. Hey, we got a deadline to meet, all right? Ready up. <laughs> Let me know who the voice acting is, because I. Pelican crew! I'm not you picking up on it. may now open your bay door and slowly exit the vehicle. Watch it's like Felix and Locust or some shit. They're like, we fucked up, we're back. Oh! Hands in the air! Oh, it is! Yes, sir. It's. What the fuck? Just one guy. Won't find anyone else on this ship. Come on out. Well, Locus is the cloak, you and right. and Felix is the dagger. Yeah. I'm just glad you found me. What is that? What? This guy don't sit right with me. This is present <laughs> day. <laughs> oh, Felix. Hero. Oh, come on, you tell me every single one of you mm. wouldn't have done the same thing. No. Come on, am I right? This is so <laughs> weird. What's happening? Uh, this is a hell of a story, son. But it's time we got you fixed up and went on our way. You don't oh, trust Lord, Felix, please. This is time. Well, hey, are you hourly? <laughs> now that's what I'm See, talking about. See, he's so charismatic. Seriously, they though, just like him. Ship looks like a fucking antique. Higher ups couldn't spare the extra cash to fix her up. Yeah, right. Military Who is in that cell? We're in very high on their budgetary priorities. No use wasting money on cryo for lawbreakers. Cryo. So they threw together a skeleton crew to make sure the cargo just makes it over alive. Yeesh. Kind of scary. This is so these men can't not handle. what I was yeah, expecting. Yeah, we got guns in the purge if things get bad. But he's getting all the information that he needs. Well, what about all the disappearances all over the news? Ships never making it to port? 
I mean, what do you do if you're attacked? Yeah, I doubt anybody's coming for our cargo. No, it ain't scavengers. That's all he I needs. Think it's them fucking aliens, man. <gasps> Not this again. I'm sure they say we're at peace, but you know them squid heads have put a laser through our heads faster than grease lightning if we gave them the chance. I mean, that's a tall. Felix will you're probably do that to Quiet. you guys. Truth be told, no one gives a rat's ass about the people on this ship. <laughs> Felix does. If they really wanted them, they could have them. <laughs> oh my God! All You're... right, <laughs> I'll take him. Oh my God! What uh, what you mean? You fuck! I mean, Duh. I'm going to kill you and take your prisoners. <laughs> I fucking knew oh. it! I fucking knew it! No, you're you guys. Oh my god. Wait, what? So when does this take place? Did Felix leave the planet and go get more space pirates? They are getting they're, they're setting up for war. Animation? I just realized animation's gotten way better. Come on, come on. Oh. Oh, you idiot. Uh what? Whoa! Bullseye. That guy just stayed there the whole time. Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. Felix, you're fucking crazy, huh? my guy! Oh! I fucking knew it! I was like, he's the cloak! He's just gonna be invisible! They're recruiting space pirates! down, Stastny. <laughs> I'm not gonna kill you. Yet! Y you're not? No. He is. he is. Oh my fucking god! Oh, son of a bitch. Sector 1, clear. Sector 2, clear. They just got Sector an entire clear. ship's worth of recruits. Quiet. <laughs> As of this moment, we are new crew of this ship. Wow. And you're all employees well, of Karan. Who Caron. the hell are you? Why don't you let the people person handle this? Okay. <laughs> and he's a people person well, psych up. psychopath! We're looking for soldiers who aren't afraid of killing lots of people for lots of money. We don't care who you are. <gasps> we don't care what you've done. Because quite frankly, <gasps> we've probably done a hell of a lot worse. All we want oh are God. men who can follow orders and hold their own on the battlefield. We need to fight a war. We're going to war, folks. Yeah. Now, our enemies are weak, but there's a lot of them. You got, got gypped twice. You got duped twice, my guy. Side. But if you survive, you'll be rich enough to live out the rest of your lives. Jesus fucking Christ. Who was that one guy in the cell? It made it seem like they were focusing on that person. totally awesome idea. Doesn't sound like your kind of job. We'll let you off the ship. Uh-huh. But if you're ready to fight for your freedom, then please, firmly <laughs> grasp the bars of your cell. Firmly grasp it in your hands. <laughs> firmly grasp it. Yep, there you go. Holy shit. Yep. Who wouldn't want the opportunity to get out well, of jail and make money? All right then. And they're already criminals. Oh! Oh my god. He meant that quite literally. Congratulations. You're hired. Before you say anything, yes, I know they triggered the alarm, and yes, I did have more fun because of it. Thank you for asking. These prisoners lack our men's discipline. Control wants to even the numbers. Oh my god. Idea. Well, Logan, you have quantity, Felix. not quality. We've got a prisoner who doesn't really look up to par. Smartass put two and two together and tied his bed sheets around his waist before the purge. Oh shit. Quick thinking. He has to speak with you. Says he has something you need. Who? Bring him in. <laughs> the counselor! Ah! Ah! Oh my god! Gentlemen, <laughs> allow me to introduce myself. My name 
is Aiden Price. Aiden Price! Okay, well, Price, the here's the deal. The looking for soldiers, not whatever the hell you're supposed to be. <laughs> you say you have something we want? No, Information! I have something you need. The freelancers you mentioned. Am I correct in assuming <laughs> they are agents Caroline <laughs> and Washington? <laughs> How would you know that? Project Freelancer! I know everything there is to know about my agents. As the former counselor of Project Freelancer, I helped to mold them. Psychiatric analyses, medical histories. He's gonna exploit them. Right here. And I can give them to you. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hey, you the counselor has been alive this whole time! Freelancer's confiscated record. If you're referring to the documents recovered by the UNSC, he doesn't. you should know that is merely the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I think you're bluffing. Did you know Agent Washington refuses artificial intelligence access to his neural implants? Oh! Or that Agent Carolina is 57% more likely to neglect her teammates when presented with a competitive scenario? What the fuck? No. He's gonna and sell them out. I realize there is another inmate aboard this ship that shares a history with the freelancers. Wait, what? Another! Which would undoubtedly prove useful to you if you were what? properly guided. Another freelancer? Was it that Wait, person that we that they were like honing in on in the cell with <laughs> the tattoo? We're gonna get along great. The second inmate, take us to him. Oh. Of course. I am fucking. I I cannot. I cannot process this. Now, now, that's enough questions for today. We're still at war. This guy. Who the fuck are you? All good things must come to an end. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> oh my god. Roger! Have you seen wait a minute. Hold the up! Hold the fuck up! What the fuck am I in for, dude? They brought back Project Freelancer relevancy. Is this like a failed freelancer? He had who the fuck? He had like a dolphin, like a tattoo on his back or whatnot. What the fuck? I need to see this one more time. Like I'm tripping balls right now. There's another person tied with the freelancers. Now, now, that's enough questions. Griff ball players strike after fourth week. <laughs> see right here, right here. He literally has like a fiery like. Like radical dude, like tattoo on his back, and then on the lower back, he's got a fucking shark, and like some Japanese or. Things must come to it. And he looks like. Wait a minute. Fucking guy died, right? There was somebody in season nine. Dude, there's no fucking way this is shark face. Oh my god. He literally fought with Washington. Hold on, hold the fuck on. I'm literally gonna lose my fucking mind. Okay, right, bro, we'll this is here. literally. It's him! Woo! How the fuck is this guy not dead? Carolina hit him with the gravity hammer. And then Leonard issued a firing main cannon on the building, which then it shortly collapsed afterwards. How is this guy alive? What the fuck is with this guy? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna find out in the future! Dude! 
He had the flamethrower and everything! This guy was a badass! I am baffled right now. It bounces? Who makes a gun that bounces? <laughs> oh. What the hell? It bounces? Who designs a gun that bounces? Oh. This is the worst gun ever. Of all of time. All time. <laughs> Dude, oh. he's back from the dead. I just want to play this out before we get back into it. Oh my goodness gracious. See, like he, this entire thing, he didn't get killed here. He just got knocked out with the gravity hammer. I need to see it to believe it now. Yeah, right there. And that was it. That guy was a dick. Come on. <laughs> <Let's be> <laughs> that guy's a dick. Yeah, he's, that dick's about to come back to bite you. I mean, <laughs> bow chicka bow wow. Dude. This guy is this guy. I can't believe this shit. This is insane. Remember, that's the same tattoo in the shark come to with end. the shark face. And that's why his face is messed up because this man just got a freaking gravity hammer to the face and he survived a freaking, a, a freaking demolition of an entire building. And he's the last member of the insurrectionists. CT's dead, Pale Man's dead. That entire squad got leveled in season 10. I cannot believe we're getting so much of the past. Pit freaking Sharkface and the counselor. It almost kind of feels like it's like Project Freelancer ends with this trilogy like they're bringing the remnants the things that are left this is all that's left oh my god dude i can't believe this guy even is alive right now i completely forgot about him sheesh i have no idea what i'm getting into right now i'm so hyped what the actual fuck? Dude, they freaking made out like bandits. No pun intended. They're mercenaries, but. Kaboom, What? Have you seen. Wait a minute. Jesus what the hell Christ. Are you, uh, you ever get the feeling something really. Really bad. Really bad's about to happen? happen? Yep. Only every it already did. Time I <laughs> to you. <laughs> oh my god, dude. The counselor! Here's the thing though, the counselor is only gonna be able to account for the two freelancers and the AI, like Epsilon, but that's still such a massive advantage because they're like, they're like, <clears throat> it, it's just the fact of like, they are like, I think the keys to like the red and blues ultimate, like overall dynamic, right? They're the freelancers, they're the professionals, they're the ones with the most combat experience. And if you exploit them, and you break them down, you're kind of only left with the happenstance that comes with reds and blues. They're always like in the right place at the right time. They always have luck on their side. Hopefully Felix can be three for three and underestimate them once again, because if that's the case, I can I can easily see control just putting a bullet in Felix's head because he's more trouble than he's worth. And the reason they're going to war is because he fucked up on two occasions. Holy shit. <clears throat> Armonia, capital city morning, of Chorus, Captain downtown. Griff. Good morning, Captain Griff. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, oh Captain Griff. <laughs> that Michaels? Yes, Matthews. Oh, hey. Matthews, Matthews, uh, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thanks again for everything you and the other Reds and Blues did for us. Hey, hey now we're all working camera. together. We did. Gosh, man. You guys are I fucked, really though. I appreciate that. You guys are Almost fucked. As much as I did the other 56 times you thanked me. Oh, good. <laughs> well, he's a kiss ass. What do you expect? It as annoying. It does. Yo, that skirt, skirt. Just gonna repress that. What? Oh, Captain Griff. Uh, good to see you. I wanted to thank you. Thank you. For, you. Uh, oh my God. Look, get out of there. You know where Kimball is? I need to talk to her. Kimball? Uh, I'm pretty sure I saw her in the armory a little while ago. Great. Thanks. How's her and Doyle doing? Do you need an escort? No. <clears throat> oh boy. Matthews, right. relax. Explain armory. Oh. 
Why? Yo, Lopez, you what's going on, my guy? Oh. Because I'm a gunman? <laughs> yeah, I know, I get that. You keep saying that. I mean, why do you need it right now? <laughs> hey, G-Man! You never up. know when you need a chain well, gun. I mean, how else are people gonna know what I do right here? <laughs> You're a soldier. Everyone's a soldier. You shoot at people who shoot at you until one of you dies from all the shooting. Yeah, yeah but that's what that's I'm saying. That's about right. Without my big gun, I just look like all the regular soldiers. No, you don't. You've got white armor and red stripes. Ugh, and they're just all. <laughs> I'm thinking we go bold. Maybe red armor with white stripes. <laughs> uh -huh. Donut, just because you're in charge of uniforms doesn't mean you're Oh my god, he's gotta look. They gotta look I fashionable. Don't this camouflage. What camouflage? Oh. Huh. Good point. <laughs> How the hell have you not been shot yet? Oh boy, yeah, he because sticks out like a sore red thumb. For shit. You wanna send it to my face, punk? Hey, uh oh. Out. Come on, you guys no gotta work together. Fire. Now calm down, or I'm not gonna give you a gun. He started <clears> it. Out of my way, Captain. He started it. Uh, classic. Griff, what do you want? Can't you see we're busy? Where's Kimball? I don't know. What are you Where looking are for Kimball for? Training this morning? Where do you guys training in? In the training room. Oh right, yeah. Literally anywhere. Oh there. Griff, well, I think I heard classic. Was inspecting the troops over there a little while ago. Oh man, really? Hey. Hey, Lopez, nice to see you, buddy. Tell Jensen to stop driving cars that she fixes. <laughs> yeah, she's bending corners. Lopez, I don't speak Spanish. I have never <laughs> spoken Spanish. I've never understood a word you've said ever. Oh. Jesus. Yo, they need to get their shit together. Y'all are going to war. Come on now. Training facility that scared the fuck out of me. Yo, is that uh Palomo? That's good sh good shoot. Lieutenant Palomo! Oh! Yes, Agent Washington, <laughs> sir! Explain to me how, in light of your recent promotion, you've somehow managed to become worse at target. Oh practice. boy. Uh, well, I guess that was Palomo. Well I don't <laughs> Oh. Hey, relax um, there, hard ass. I mean, you're not a you're not a you're not a freelancer anymore. Lieutenant. Also, I've been trying to make a smiley face for like nine minutes. <laughs> Wash. Hey, he's got good, good aim. Where's Kimball? Oh, Captain Griff. Huh? Everybody's uh, stationed. Griff's the only one that's slacking. Yeah, that's probably because I wasn't there. So you weren't. Which is why everyone is going to give me three laps oh. around the training facility. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, come on. Get moving. Damn. Them? Remedial training. Disciplining a group for the actions of a single soldier leads to social pressures that typically result yeah, in that... hasty correction of undesirable behavior. Classic also, like, strategy. massive Thanks resentment. A lot, face. So, Thanks a lot, Griff. Are you ready to begin today's training? Uh, What's he looking for Kimball for, no. though? All right, then. Let's make it four laps. Oh, come yes. on, dude. Stop being a hard ass. <laughs> How you feeling now? I feel like this fucking weird. Five laps! Stop, uh, Washington! Man, this is the best punishment ever. <laughs> what do you need Kimball for anyway? She's in the middle of a meeting with Doyle. So she's in the war room? Ah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, okay. Uh, you're not going anywhere until... Sorry, dude. Gotta go. Uh, just punish the rebels some more. I'm sure I'll learn my lesson. Six laps! God damn it. Ooh. Oh! Well... We Yo, I like the like see the animation sprinkled in. That's so good. Here, if your men prefer it, the fact of the matter is we are going to run out of ammunition faster. But you're not <sighs> taking the These two are still arguing. Count. Yes, standard issue assault rifle has a fire rate the of war room. rounds per second. But if those rounds are being fired at the enemy, then that means we have 15 chances to kill the enemy every time we pull the trigger. Without our mercenaries bringing in supplies, we need to make mm. every bullet count. Are you doubting my soldier's skill on the battlefield? I am doubting so much more than that. <laughs> I mean, you're the freaking, what is he, it the secretary to the, the general or whatever? Issues, and there is yet to be a single day where you have not Tested its strength. Well, Come on, you guys gotta work you together. Y'all ain't ready for this war, we dude. For real. The freaking mercenaries, they're ready, Liza. dude. They just got now, an entire ship. People would probably consider a hero, like a firefighter or the guy that invented the microwave or uh, <laughs> the Oreo dude. Nabisco? Okay. So, so, what I want to know is why a hero like myself. Is not allowed to have second helpings in the mess hall. Are you fucking kidding me? Get the uh, fuck out of here, Griff. Because we're low on food. Because <laughs> you're I'll one person. To ration our meals, but not our ammo. That is hardly relevant. Hey, I know you guys are having a hard time playing nice. But I'm hungry. There are bigger things at stake right now. Like Get your out. stomach. Like steak, for instance. Get <laughs> out. We need bigger ones. Griff, leave now. 
before I shoot you. So, are we just gonna put a pin in this, or? Oh my God! Well, someone just put him on dish duty for the yes, rest of the day. Yes, please get out of here. Come on, sir. Let's go. God, she needs ba constant babysitting. Come on, Can Griff. We, we understand, but this is bigger things well, to worry about. The reason I originally came to speak with you was to inform you of the status of our men's most recent assault. Wait, they radioed in? Oh. What happened? Well. Uh oh. Caron <laughs> Research <laughs> Complex Two C. Oh, oh come on! <laughs> now you guys are just Ooh, fucking being assholes, just gloating. All right. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I approve enough. of the, uh, the animation, but base, come on, dude. No need for cruel and unusual punishment. Sure. I can drop some sick beats on them. Hey, no, they're improving, surprise. though. They're actually winning. They're actually uh, coming out on top <laughs> on these missions. Epsilon! Square. Come on. Let's get this place sorted out. Intel says they were keeping some freelancer equipment here. Right, Ooh. Sarge. Why don't you go check on the feds? Tucker, are you down to handle the rebels? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. <clears throat> In all the years we spent, Colonel the game, Sarge. What the hell did he learn to dance? <laughs> I've got bigger questions on my mind right now. Yeah? Like, like what? what? Like what else was Karin studying out here? Uh oh. <laughs> that's uh, that's not sus at all. Jesus Christ. All right. So, uh, are we gonna find out what Karin's been up to? What the heck is that out there? Is that like a base or something? Agent Carolina, we've retrieved what appears to be a domed energy shield. My god, we're already on episode three. What the, the fuck? Bubble shield? The Are bubble sure? shield! Uh North's equipment! Oh! Where's yeah, we're oh, pretty sure. Theta That's can great. operate that. We can hook it up and start running some tests in a few hours. Oh, hey, whoa, 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 slow down. What about the giant floating tower in the sky? Did you forget about that crazy bullshit? What? The temple? The temple? <clears throat> that the aliens made? I'm sorry. Wait, what? What? You're familiar Wait, with that Wait, that's alien structure. tech? Uh, I mean, I think most of us are, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna stop you right there. You're telling me <laughs> that people on this planet are just used to seeing flying spaceship like that? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, Randy! You Randy! You one of those alien towers before? Oh, yeah! My dad took me to one when I was a kid. <laughs> They're nice, right? Oh, yeah! They had funnel cake right outside, yeah. too! Oh, I remember that! <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's Junior, man? I miss oh, yeah. Junior. It's pretty common. How is this not a bigger deal? Well, come on, man. I mean, I don't know if he died or not. And they don't really do anything. It's a giant flying tower. <laughs> and you're a dead guy. That's also somehow an AI. Okay? <laughs> and you're a that ghost. That's weird too. But you don't hear me going on about it. Enough. Oh boy. Just secure the free. All right, y'all need to get your shit together, Absalon please. And I will be by in a few minutes. <sighs> yes, ma'am. All right, let's Look, do it. I don't care what these guys <clears throat> say. Those towers aren't some fucking tourist trap. They're important. Remember the tractor beams at Crash Site Alpha? Mm -hmm. Karan is studying these things. Yeah, he's studying alien tech. Shit. That's bad. I get it. How do you so, use that against them? Who would you say is our resident expert on alien technology? The doctor? Hey, I called it! <laughs> oh, I knew today was going to be a good yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm so Dr. glad Ray. Emily Gray's back. Oh, I can't tell you how nice it is to get out of the office and away from all the complaining. <laughs> My leg hurts. I need blood. <laughs> but I don't want to have a robot arm. Right. Uh, well, I love her. The reason we called you here is to investigate the alien temple Karan's been sitting yesterday. Yeah, 200 radio. IQ. Not surprising, really emerged from the ground shortly after you and his pulled out. Never did anything, sadly, but that doesn't mean that they won't. Thankfully, I spent time brushing up with their history in between college internships. Are you so happy we're such close friends? Oh my god, Aaron, you're so fucking I talented. Am. Jesus Christ. So thankful. So different from Blake. The oh, opposite of Blake completely. Hey, what's the status on that robot arm I ordered? Oh. Oh. the trial stages, Colonel. Volunteers are Colonel, to come oh my by. god. Well, we yeah, really gotta get used to really calling him Colonel Sarge. Why don't you go take a look at Karin's research? Huh. Epsilon and I have a few armor upgrades to take care of. Oh my I gosh, are we gonna see Theta again? Ah oh, man! Oh, ah, dude, they keep, are they using the headache. future cubes like crazy? Simmons, you're late. You were saying what took you guys? <laughs> Instant teleportation. Oh yeah, 
had to make sure Lopez and Donut could handle things while we were gone. Oh, you know, okay. weapons and ammo. How hard can it be? And uh, Griff was trying to stuff his face with more food. Oh, God. Here we go. Actually, I think Lopez and Donut Lopez make a really good pair. Because <laughs> no one speaks Spanish. Whoa, no need to call the man a turkey baster, Lopez. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> Forgive him. It's his fiery Latin temper. <laughs> Harder than you think. So, you got the gun. I love donuts right, so here. much. Weapons, ammo, oh. laser beams, you name it. Sheesh. I saw that rocket, dude. O'Malley would be proud. In which case, it's kind of the opposite. Hanukkah? Excellent work, sir. Another enemy outpost taken down. <laughs> Just wish I could have been there to see you on the battlefield. Why don't you guys come with us on the next mission? <laughs> okay, let's, let's not get that ahead of ourselves, all right? We're fine where we up. are. Oh! Well, that's enough back-breaking labor for Oh, one my day. God. Go. Wasting now, future I cubes. Damn, and I thought I was fast. What? I mean, uh, what? Oh. Nothing. Ma'am, give me back the microphone. Oh, God! <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Related people get your butts in here. Ma'am, please come down. You have no appreciation for my friends. Chill. My god. Dude, what? They're all over the place. That was fast. Look, it's really quick, normal, okay? Wait, what? Quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Now say what <laughs> you want about our enemy. Crazy. They suck. They're dirtbags. Total dirt dirt bags. Not an invitation to talk, guys. But you can't discount their ambition. Or intelligence, for that matter. Mm. There's a reason Chairman Hargrove got to where he is now. Yeah. This compound isn't one of Caron's typical munitions factories or radio jammers. They're not disassembling alien artifacts here. They're, They're making trying them? trying to turn them back on. And that oh. tower you saw seems to be their primary target. Oh, see? Who called that? No wonder he wants the planet. So, what does it do? That's exactly what I intend to find out. Now, who's down for a field trip? Fuck. Uh, what? That can't well, be good. Well, if I'm going to take a look at this tower, I'll require an escort. How about you, Simmons? You've always seemed intelligent. Oh, thank you. Well, compared <laughs> to your friends. What? Damn. Well, why did you feel the need to add that? <laughs> no way. This shit's got blue team problems written all over it. Yeah, oh, that's on, plot based. Hey, you're the one that blue team. swords and fucks aliens, all right? So don't come crying uh, to me. Damn, Epsilon Junior. and I should stay behind in case Karin launches a counterattack. Mm. Yeah, and I can try to get you some of this data while you're out. <laughs> well, don't you worry about it, little lady. Me and Aquaman over here can handle whatever. <laughs> Aquaman. Uh, local schemes. Those no cut space pirates may be prepared for I hope, I hope. You guys don't seem very coordinated oh, no. at the moment. You'll mainly just be carrying my survey equipment to the site. Ah, right. Then we'll <laughs> carry. That stuff. We'll carry the shit out of that stuff. <laughs> mm, fine. Let's just get this over with. Actually, uh. a four man team would be ideal. Oh. You wouldn't happen to know of anyone else you could spare to help us, would you? Uh. Oh, I can think of someone. Please don't. Hold on, who is it? Oh, Caboose! I was about to say, I haven't seen Caboose the entire episode. Oh my god. It's good to see you, Caboose. It's been a while. I hate you. You're dead to me. He's been dead forever. He's been dead since the very beginning. Oh boy. Dude, these episodes are flying! I'm already on episode four. Alright, so as of right now, they're just trying to figure out. Is this, is this blood goats? It's likely any remaining car person that would have retreated. It looks like blood goats or a version of it for Halo 4. I'm hungry. Well, how do we know for sure? Oh my god. Stop yelling! Big blue idiot. You'll give away our position. If you're here, it's a car on evac spot. Save Sarge. But that Caboose, that looks so much please. like Blood Gold. Looks pretty rough, oh, like yes. the area. Um, hey, Freckles. Yes, Captain Caboose. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, Freckles, Freckles is uh, a lot. Oh, yeah, he's this gun. That's so cool. Terrible sweater. I hope nothing happens to your gun. Affirmative. Oh, boy. That's super cool. He's got a scanner on his gun, too. And like a military AI. Don't cut corners. Do you give it control over the safety? Affirmative. <laughs> also, I heard that. Whoa. Don't worry. My test determined that it was actually safer to give Freckles full control of the rifle rather than Caboose. How do you test that? <laughs> I gave Caboose the rifle for about five seconds. Makes sense. Yeah, he's Busy a team day, killer. The that turned out to be. So what happens when you pull the trigger? It releases confetti. It makes a fun party sound. Ooh. Damn. They gave. They basically. They gave Caboose a safety mode for his trigger. 
Makes sense, otherwise everyone's Dev, getting the place blasted. Definitely deserted. I already knew that. Yeah, but I just wanted to make Is there a reason sure. why the you know, textures are like things. super flat? Oh look, you finished moving all of Grace to This is literally me. Blood Gulch. Yeah, I just don't know if it's like you happen to be related to the Griff family, would you? Is this Forge? I mean, this might be I Forge, I don't know. With a sister, Bow Chicka Bow Wow. Aww. Jesus. Yeah, I don't get it. Right. Let's begin. Alright. <clears throat> This is the audio recording of Dr. Emily Gray, number 05519. Upon arriving Super at the serious. excavation site, I made several observations. One, there's a large alien structure protruding from the ground and extending into the sky. Two, okay. it's nice and sunny out today, and I love it. <laughs> and look. Ladies and gentlemen, the smartest person on the entire Oh, planet. my God. I know. It's really intimidating. Shut up. So, what's up, Doc? Well, <laughs> that's Ben. And Who here speaks alien? Church taught me a swear word. I never Where's Doc, Doc, by, by the way? What, like the font? We still haven't Very seen him. Language. Okay, I'm just gonna take all of that as a no, so why don't you all keep watch while I investigate the ruins? Oh, fine. All right. Yes, square play, dive, don't, no play, don't, uh, don't destroy anything. Now then, let's see what you're hiding. <laughs> that can't be good. We're back. All right, Finally. meanwhile, back at the armory. The has gotten into Lopez today. Well, have fun sorting through all the junk. I got a date with some crackers and a can of cheese whiz. <laughs> Can you stop wasting those, really, please? Griff? Nah, I'll probably skip the crackers. Cheese whiz. What the? Oh. Oh, hey, Griff. Hi. Uh, oh, we had whoa. to run those laps Can't because help of you. I know you haven't been by the <laughs> training room yet. Uh oh. <laughs> Is. Uh Wash still making uh -oh. you and all of them are real tired yep. You fucked up, my guy. Yeah, I gotta go. Take him! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. These people need to get their shit together. Bored. Chorus is Bored. Ooh. Bored. Bored. Alien Captain text. Tucker. Why don't you patrol somewhere else? No way. I want to be here for whenever you find out how to turn this thing on. Why? Uh, because it's probably going to look awesome as shit. With like holograms and lasers in the sky. Jesus. I want a front row seat for that. You know, I bet you'd have just as good of a view if you joined your friends over at the base. Why does she want him away Dang. from there? Maybe she wants yeah. to just focus, but... You ever wonder... Why we're here? <laughs> wonder what? Ah. Sorry, out. Is that oh my god! No. <laughs> but he just, he's yeah. like, you ever just wonder? Oh, well, and that's it. Then, oh perhaps my god. You can find something more productive that to was do so with good. Your time. Like what? I don't know. Practice aiming or push ups or whatever <laughs> it is you soldiers do. Oh boy. <laughs> Practice aiming. <laughs> Nobody does that. Uh Freeze! Reach for the sky, mercenary scum! Don't put that down. It's not a toy. Wait, what is that? I don't it's know. a toy. It was in the pile of laser weapons. Oh, wait, is that a, an back. alien gun? A plasma rifle. Huh. Guess it got shipped by mistake. So Ooh. does that mean I can keep it? Well, Kimball did say all the aliens were donut... broken, but I still can't help but feel your Does Donut get his official signature weapon? Children. Oh, right, right. Caboose went with Sarge. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Go nuts. Yes. Ooh. Agent Double O Donut is back in action. <laughs> Double O Donut. <laughs> ah. Um, well, you shouldn't so, be pointing yeah, that at someone. Let's be real. I'm on the case. God, I love you so much, Donut. How to put up with this. <laughs> oh, 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 what? You talking to me? Huh. Really, talking Tucker? To me, uh, Freaking role-playing. Oh, so you want a rematch, huh? <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> oh. Uh, hey, Doc. Wait. Is it reacting to his sword? Weapon. Weapon. Why does it all say weapon? His sword is alien tech. Oh. I think I found something. Not now, please. I may have just made a breakthrough. What is that word? Okay, yeah, but I really Wait, think is it you want Great to see Destroyer? This. Is it key? The sword is a key! Alien shit! Oh! What the fuck was that? I have no idea. Oh my god! Even the alien! Donut. The I mean, aliens from like season Wait, three, are season four are relevant now. Ah, ah, ah. What the fuck? All of the alien equipment is powering up. They just reawakened everything. <laughs> oh my god. 
All right, chill. Yeah, no, he's like, I'm fucking done. done. I ain't cleaning this shit. <gasps> the R alien armory. What in the heck just happened? Yo, banshees and freaking. Of course we did. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the view wasn't that great. Rates. Um, yeah, we had the gist of it. Told you. She. Oh, what? Um, what? <laughs> alien. No shit. Well, what the fuck does that? He's a thing. Uh, <gasps> bow chicka. What's up? <laughs> what the fuck is happening, dude? Hello? Wait, wait. Are you hello, okay? Like, like, hello? Respond with what's up! Tucker. Oh my god. Do you have any idea what you just did? He used the key! No, suffered a concussion. You just activated technology that's been dormant for thousands of years. Because of his sword! And now I think it wants you to go somewhere. A map? What the fuck? What the fuck is happening? We got aliens involved in all this shit too now? The sword was like, what? That had, what, what was that? Season three? The sword, the key, the great destroyer. That that red elite kind of look, was that an AI? Was that like in an artificial intelligence or like a computer? Cause like his sword went through it. So I wonder if that was just like a projection of like the alien that was like, or whatever it was that was talking to them. Bro, this was not the episode that I thought was going to turn out. Everyone's all over the place. You got the freaking, the two leaders of the Federalists in the New Republic that can't reach a compromise with rations and with uh, ammunition and food supplies and all that stuff. Meanwhile, Felix and Locus just freaking hostile took over a freaking prison ship hold. And the counselor's back in the picture. What the fuck is happening? Dear God in heaven. <laughs> oh my God, yo. Season 13 popped the fuck off, dude. Episode one has to be one of the best premiere episodes of Red vs. Blue that I can think of uh, within the last six or seven seasons. Uh, season, it, it was very akin to season uh, to season 10 episode one with um, with York and that initial guard and, uh, and Delta, you know, that whole interaction at the beginning when he was supposed to be unlocking the, you know, basically bypassing the lock and stuff like that. Uh, mainly, mainly due to the animation, like the, the, it was all completely a hundred percent like CG animated, which was really cool. Uh, took me back to like project freelancer days. Cause that's how everything was produced in that style of the past. So that was the first thing that initially, like, I was like, oh my god. The music is so good. I heard that, um, I, I have since rewatched after my reaction, uh, rewatched The Batch, and uh, I heard that, uh, I think Dave Levy, or David Levy, uh, who did music for Genlock contributed to a significant portion of the music, um, I think in the first episode or just overall for the uh for the scores and that the first episode so cool i actually like rewatched the first episode like maybe three or four times uh in watching all of the episodes back for this review um you know i've taken down my notes as i usually do i don't have a notebook for this one i actually got a tablet so i think i have like two pages of notes for the tablet which is uh which is saying a lot. I mean, it's all pretty condensed for the most part, but I kind of want to go episode to episode in order of, uh, you know, the, the, the sequence of events and the general interest that I have going into it, because I feel like there's going to be a lot. If you're pulling out of the, if you're pulling project freelancer out of the closet and shark face and fucking the counselor, and now you're going to have someone that's relevant to, Project Freelancer, Carolina, Washington, and especially Epsilon. That's a recipe for a whole ton of fuckery to go on. And um, they can really do a lot because there's a lot of history linking to the past that... And I mentioned it in my review too, and I thought it was kind of funny that like... I, the only thing I was hoping is that we'd get the counselor because we never found out what happened to him. I assume... I should have assumed that he was arrested, but... 
and the fact that he was arrested but the director kind of was like hunkered down to the last moment and he just kind of went out um i don't know it's it's just odd too because in general like the only people of influence of project freelancer of noteworthiness is the director and the counselor so you know uh, like we don't even know what became of the other freelancers that didn't get ai you know what i mean like i think it would be cool if we got those guys uh, a massachusetts an idaho a tennessee nebraska you know what i mean like any other uh states out there that were a part of the project but maybe not as directly involved when it came to the ai and maybe then they're not as important or they're not as relevant in the grand scheme of the you know the red versus blue storyline but i think that would still be pretty cool to have uh, skilled uh, individuals, like skilled soldiers in that regard. But yeah, season 13, episode one through four, incredible. It is time to go to war. So the first thing uh, uh, is the, the ship. It's called the UNSC Tartarus. Um, RIP to the UNSC Tartarus. I don't know if they're going to use the ship during the, during like the whole like assault, you know, and the war thing too, like crash it into the freaking capital city. That'd be fucking nutty if they did that shit. Um, but like, obviously UNSC reminds me of like the, the, the staff of Caron. It reminds me of the mother of invention, you know, just like a massive, um, ship that holds a significant setting like the first episode of all things um and yeah i had i mentioned here season 10 vibes like i said with the animation uh with the like it's just very and i I, w I don't even know if they went the animation route because season like you know this is a trilogy so season 11 was just all mis machine animation they kind of like i said it's kind of like a revamped blood gulch chronicles vibe and then you got season 12 which was like a blend of animation and machinima and then they just uh, obviously it's not going to be all animation but i appreciated that the first episode was just all animation i think with the exception of uh of the griffin caboose scene at the end but but i just loved how they kind of like were progressing to get back to where like production was at one point with project freelance all the project freelancer stuff was just all animated so i'm wondering if we're gonna get that kind of experience to in full when we get into like the actual war and you know uh the freelancers versus mercenaries again or whenever the counselor is involved because the counselor is pretty much 3d modeled uh shark face is 3d modeled so i think like having all of those components together is going to make for some really high production quality towards the end of the towards uh, at any given point during the season malcolm hargrove is fully modeled so you can't really utilize scenes with them the same way that you would do with like machine in my opinion uh but yeah they teased shark face the tattoo i i i don't remember that at all like i went back and i watched the sarcophagus fight between uh him and the others and he has it like embroiled on his armor so i was just like holy shit like what an iconic what a cool way to reference someone without saying anything The the shark tattoo should have given it away. He has like the shark tattoo on his back and then like the, like the jaws of it in the front. He has like redemption on his, uh, on his, uh, on his like chest, or, like on his, on his like collarbones. And so they, they did a lot, but without doing a lot, you know, his face is all fucked up. I assume due to the aftermath of fighting Carolina and Washington, which it's crazy I, I have to assume, like, you have to assume, right, that Miles, like, was like, okay, what hasn't been, like, set in stone yet from Project Freelancer that we can, or maybe, you know, because I think him and Bernie were also kind of co collaborating on the writing process, but Miles was the head writer at the time, but I just think it's so cool because, like, Bernie was still writing for Red vs. Blue during seasons 9 and 10, and Sharkface was kind of like, I guess everyone expected him to just be dead, and it, it makes sense, right? Because remember that one dude that was like, he was like holding the bomb or he was holding the uh, the transmitter for like the firing main cannon. And then we see him on the assault with, uh, you know, the assault on CT and the gang. And the dude has a robot arm. And I'm like, wait, who's the robot arm dude? And you guys told me that, oh, that's the guy who was holding. I was like, how did that blast not just kill him outright? Like, how did he survive? How did he get away with an arm, with, with just an arm lost? So... I don't know. I feel like that shot was just meant to just be like an initial, like initial impact. And then the collateral damage was what really did the damage to the building and had it collapse. Cause otherwise the, sh the, the whole building would have just been like blown to smithereens. If it was that, if that was, if it was like meant for it to do that, but I don't know. I feel like the, I feel like that one single shot just f like changes my perception of everything. Cause it's just like, Oh, that blast 
was kind of like a flex because it i don't really know how much it how much damage it did because a bunch of those people you know obviously a bunch of them died but some of them like shark face made it out alive after he had already gotten like knocked out he was on one of those floors and then the building just collapsed and he made it out and he probably like and then he got arrested so that kind of sucks and then the rest of his friends got killed but um i i like how the shark face tease was was there um i'm wondering how relevant he's gonna be if it's just going to be a simple because he mentioned they mentioned like oh he has history but history to his extent i think really just comes down to um well actually let me think about that yeah so the only interaction that i think he really had with them was that he got into a skirmish with both of those freelancers in particular and the beauty of the writing of it all is that those are the only two freelancers that survive the the internal project with the director and the AI and stuff like that. So history is going to uh, catch up to them. Um, the past is going to meet them both. And I, I wonder how things are going to turn out now that there's Felix, Locus, and Sharkface all working together. Give this man a flamethrower and a, and, a, and a second round with them. And I, I'm, I'm wondering how things are going to fare uh, in that regard. But I'm assuming things are going to not end well with shark face i doubt he's gonna be like yeah i'm just gonna go off and you know help in this chorus war and then when everything is said and done you know just go and live a happy life so i feel like things are just not going to end well for him for round two but it's still gonna be interesting to see how carolina reacts how washington especially washington because he was like what the fuck's up with this guy and then he was like that guy was such a dick and it's like damn bro he, he heard those words, by the way, and he's not going to... He he saved them for all these years. I don't even know how many years it's been since since the sarcophagus. You know what I mean? It's got to be a couple years at least. So uh, looking forward to all of that. But the, the initial setup of, you know, the episode starting, it, it felt so weird too because it said present day. But I there was a disconnect for me at least because I wasn't aware that like Felix and Locus would leave the planet to go and get more recruits within, I assume within the galaxy, within like the outskirts of the planet, um, you know, cause they got a freaking, uh, they got like a prison ship for Christ's sake to recruit more soldiers to help aid them in the war uh, against the reds and blues, which they're also trying to harness the power of the, the alien technology as well. And, uh, I love the, the setup, like Felix coming out of the ship and just being like, I'm the only one here. And in my head, I'm like, but you're the dagger. Locus would be the cloak, which means he would have camo. And then it came to pass regardless. It's crazy how, how much of a psychotic people person Felix is. I think the first episode highlighted Felix's like psychotic tendencies, even more the fact of like, He's toying with his, he's playing with his food, basically. Um, you know, the guy's like, oh, something doesn't sit right with me. And then in the next clip, he's like, this guy's my fucking hero. And it's like, he knows, he plays it so well, dude. He just, he, like, I feel like that's like manipulation at its finest. Give them a false sense of security, make them all buddy, buddy and awesome. And then he was just getting free information. He's like, yeah, our guns are in the, are in the purge. Uh, no one else comes out here. No one gives a shit about us. No one keeps tabs on us. They got better things to do. AKA, well, if I kill all of you guys and take this, no one's going to bat an eye. No one's going to ask questions. It just kind of worked out. That was honestly like the, the most free thing i've ever seen happen to anybody in this show like i've never seen like a more well-oiled machine locust coming I, I feel like locust didn't even need to barge in i feel like felix could have just leveled anybody in there um and then the soldiers were just so like they were worse than the reds and blues honestly uh they kind of reminded me and it's weird too because i think fortnite came out after this season but they reminded me of like fortnite like the fortnite um I think Fortnite has like skins like that, but I couldn't get Fortnite out of my head. I don't know if it was the animation. I don't know if it was the character models of those soldiers uh, or if they've had something similar in Fortnite, but I, I just couldn't shake like the Fortnite vibe um, from the soldiers that just got completely leveled by Felix and he just like took them all the task. Um, it was beautiful. The first episode was amazing. The animation, while the choreography isn't like, obviously it wasn't Monty level. It was really good in terms of overall fluidity, um, of Felix and kind of just going through all of the soldiers one by one. Uh, it wasn't as stiff or rough or rugged as like Felix and Locus up against Carolina and Washington, uh, last season for the finale batch. But, um, but yeah, so I, I really appreciated that. The music went really well. I think, again, David Levy or Dave Levy is, uh, is composing or producing the music this time around. So the first episode was just incredible. Uh, we got the uh, son of a bitch line as well. 
and uh Locus. Locus being a part of the entire thing was great uh for him coming in obviously you can't have one without the other another thing that i want to do before i get any further is i want to give a big shout out to caesar uh twitter handle kaiser geyser uh who i believe at the time of his hire at rooster teeth i think he was an environmental artist or or something to that effect he still works at rooster teeth right now but i remember this story and this is kind of how I got introduced to like the ro rooster teeth, like Ruby red versus blue, like reaction scene uh, was that during season 13, he was really excited for season 13. Cause I think that's when around the time he got hired at rooster teeth and uh, he wanted, I think it was for his birthday or it was like a Twitter request or something like that. But a bunch of people reacted to, uh, I think it was the first episode of season 13 of RVB. And I remember him mentioning that at the uh, the, uh, the Rooster Teeth React panel at RTX 2016, because I was on that panel and I was on the following panel uh, for 2017. And he, I think he went to both panels. I know he went to the first one. I think he went to both panels. And so um, apparently he's a character model uh, and I, I was thinking it in my head. I was like, that kind of looks like Caesar, but I didn't want to say it in case I was wrong. But um, he actually came on Twitter and he was like, yeah, no, like I, I, I hope he was like, I'm glad I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me get thrown out of the uh, out of the prison cell. And I was like, dude, I thought that was you. I wanted to say something, but I hope he enjoys. I hope he ends up checking it out because I know at the time he was really excited to see a lot of people's reactions to RVB 13. And obviously I was watching Ruby volume like two or volume three at that time. So uh, it, it's kind of great that I'm actually able to kind of catch up after so long. And uh, he's able hopefully able to check this out and you know be able to you know experience the show again through the eyes of someone who's going through it for the first time so uh caesar kaiser geyser on twitter again uh shout out to him and rip to your character in rvb for this ep for the first episode uh but yeah the initiation overall was complete savagery was not expecting that to happen at all they were like firmly grasp the bars in your hand firmly grasp it and he's like firmly grasp it and he pushes the button and everyone goes flying even some of the people that were holding the bar so it's like you gotta firm you literally had to firmly grasp it or your ass is pretty much dead at this point so was not expecting that turnout because even even they, they were like oh if you don't want to join we'll let you off the ship quite literally we'll let your ass off the ship and you'll be floating in space it seems like both sides are trying to shore up their own numbers and then once the war starts the war starts meanwhile you got malcolm hargrove on the tv uh you know damage controlling trying to you know play it off like nothing's wrong or whatever uh i actually don't know if he's because it says we are at war but I don't know if he's putting on the front of the UNSC is at war. If Karan, because I don't, I don't know if people know that he's involved with Karan. I think Karan is quite literally like the, uh, like under the table, like dark side of the web, um, like infrastructure that he's building. Whereas in the public perception, he is the UNSC sub oversight subcommittee chairperson. And then like at nighttime when no one's looking, he's, uh, he's the CEO of Caron industry. So, um, I don't really understand. I don't really know his, uh, his public relationship between the two. Uh, but clearly he's double dipping into both of them, but he's establishing to the, to the people that there is a, like that there's a war going on and, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately good things don't last forever and so on and so forth. So I just want to see more of Malcolm. I want him on screen as much as possible. I want to know his ideologies. I want to know if anyone's going to take him to task with like the audacity that he had to talk all that shit to Leonard. And then he's probably i'm gonna say this he's worse than leonard church like the benevolent like the the one thing and i said this in my review and i'm gonna say it again here the one thing that you can at least do with leonard is understand why he's doing it from a human level to me it seems like malcolm just wants to kill these people com co commit planetary genocide so he has this planet for alien technology to run his business it doesn't seem like he's doing it for a for the pain of loss, 
for reuniting with a deceased loved one, for trying to contribute in, 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 in you know, the great war with the aliens. Leonard at least tried to do all of those things. And at some point he lost his way because it was failure upon failure upon failure. And it was pushing him to be a worse and worse individual as time went on because that because of that desperation to, to reach that, the, you know, to, to, to make to make sure that by the end of it, the ends justified the means. But he never got the thing that he wanted. He never reached that goal. I really don't see in any way, shape, or form how I can... I don't know if there's nuance. I don't know if there's uh, layers to Malcolm. But I really do think it's it's like... you're. It's easy to talk shit to somebody else and have the moral high ground when your dirty laundry isn't being aired out. When you haven't been caught. So you're actually able to stand there with some type of... You know, with some type of uh, authority. When if his shit was put out there just as much... Uh, you know, the, if the people um, of the galaxy or whoever else in in the area finds out what he's doing, he's going to be in the hot seat just like Leonard was. And I hope that happens. And I hope it's Epsilon and I hope it's Carolina that take him to task more than anything because that's the daughter and technically the son <laughs> of of Leonard. You know what I mean? And the daughter of, of, of Allison too, which is what the project was kind of a byproduct creation for. Um, or maybe that was the main purpose and the war was the byproduct, but I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm not going to enjoy whenever Malcolm is on screen because I hold such a disdain for him as a character, as a person. Yes, I can understand where his, his business practices and the things that he does and what he contributes towards, uh, how that helps humanity at the end of the day, you know, the cryo, the cryogenics, uh, the weaponry and all that stuff. But now you're like, th th all the stuff that you're doing is based off of blood money. It's based off of killing and hiring mercenaries and, and being a double agent and being slick and, and, and slipping through protocol and slipping by procedure. All the things that you condemn the direct, I'm going to stop right there. I'm rambling now. I don't like, I don't like Malcolm Hargrove. And, uh, I really hope that there's no nuance to him because I don't want to be conflicted about disliking him because I feel like Leonard, while he did fucked up shit, it's understandable and it came from a, an emotional human place. And I, I just felt pure tragedy for, for everybody involved. The freelancers, Leonard, Allison, Carolina, Washington, Epsilon, the Alpha, like it, it, it just, it tore at my heart in, in a way that I don't think anything ever really had. And, um, I don't think there's going to be any type of feelings like that when it comes to Malcolm. So I, I want to know about him. I want to know his beliefs. I want to know his stance on things. I want to know if he talks about Epsilon, if he talks about the director to Carolina or to Washington or his feelings of the past and all that other stuff and what he's doing and what he's trying to accomplish and what really happens to him by the end of the season more than anything. So episode one overall, fucking awesome. I wonder if we're going to see Maine's armor uh, when we see Malcolm again, because apparently it's going to be delivered to, or the helmet at least, is going to be delivered to the trophy room of, uh, of his ship. So, you know, that's something that we're going to have to, we're going to have to wait on. I was so blown the fuck away by the counselor's return. He has been the one thing of Project Freelancer that I've been wondering about since season 10. Because even after season 10, right after the, the director, you know, took his life and after, you know, the project was shut down. And apparently the writers have other things in store for him. So it's crazy that he's back. His name is Aiden Price. I almost said Aiden Pierce, which is... That's watch. That's freaking watchdogs. That has nothing to do with this. So Aiden Price, the counselor, Project Freelancer. It seems like he's gonna be exchanging information and exploiting um, the uh, basically the integrity of of the uh, of Washington and Carolina for his freedom, most likely. And he's even going as far as to tag along with uh with uh with shark face to do it all i don't really know much uh, i mean i don't really have much of an opinion on the counselor i always felt like he had this very calming menacing demeanor to him you know what i mean like his calm soothing nature like the way that he talks and 
you know, even, even in like the most dire or the, and even in the most stressful situations, like I remember that one situation where Carolina and her dad were going back and forth about her wanting to AI and he was trying to cool down the situation and fucking Leonard was like, if you wanted cooler heads, you should have joined the Coast Guard. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you, you freaking, you didn't have to do it to him like that, Leonard. But, uh, but yeah, like I, I don't really know. I think he's out to save himself. Uh, I don't really know if he's going to side with... I mean, at this point, technically, if you're not with us, you're against us. So he, by proxy of just working with Felix and Locus, he is on car and industry side right now. So I don't know if this is a means to an end. It sucks that he's going to exploit David and, uh, and Carolina like that. I don't really know if he knows anything about Epsilon internally or in depth outside of his creation because he was there for the creation of Epsilon. But yeah, it's just crazy to see him again. And he might actually cause a fair bit of issues because he knows them inside and out. Like he said, he is probably more responsible for how these freelancers turned out than the director. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Because he, he's even been a, along with them for, you know, the entirety of the project. And even a little bit afterwards, you know, when Washington was kind of, uh, when Washington was recovery one and he was going from post to post, you know, re retrieving the AI and, you know, taking care of the bodies of his, of his former friends or his friends at the time. Um, you know, the council was there every step of the way to, to kind of psychoanalyze him and make sure that things are going, uh, according to plan and things of that nature. So, uh, I don't really have much of an opinion on the counselor other than I kind of want to wait and see, um, what he commits to, if he's committing to the war, to the extent of where he can save himself, if he actually is trying to kind of like, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to survive and I will join the enemy of my, you know what I mean? Because like the UNSC is basically like the enemy of Project Freelancer in the grand scheme of things. So I don't really even know if he had alliances with Leonard. You know what I mean? It's not like they were good friends, or whatever. They just kind of did, they were kind of business partners. You know what I mean? They did business together and now um malcolm hargrove is uh is the new business venture for him so i don't really know where to go from from there with the counselor but it's great to see him again because i'm the type of person that if i know someone exists out there and you don't tell me what happens to them and i don't see what happens to them it's gonna like hang over my head forever uh until we get that confirmation aka Cial Soleil not being an Atlas during Ruby Volume 7 and 8, but this is not the video for that. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm just interested to see him again. I'm glad that he's back. I'm assuming they're trying to bring together all of these, uh, you know, loose pieces of the puzzle for Project Freelancer. Like I said, Malcolm Hargrove, Sharkface, the counselor on top of everything that's going on with chorus you got the ai with epsilon you have uh, a couple of freelancers and i think it's going to be really great to kind of uh to kind of bring the past into the present uh and see how everything shakes up with uh with the with the chorus war so that was episode one episode two and three was kind of like um it kind of felt like just red versus blue, typical shenanigans. I don't know why I have this mindset, right? And I had this mindset when I started season 12. I was like, all right, season 11 was all freaking fun in games, but the reds and blues understand how serious this is. They got to, they got to rescue their partners. They got, and then after, you know, and then like season 12 came and it's just like, they're fucking up their training. They're not ready. They're still the same reds and blues. And I'm like, why did I expect them to change overnight? Now, things are taken even further because you got a planetary declaration of war by one of the most powerful business conglomerates in the known galaxy. You know, Caron Industries, the fucking UNSC Oversight Subcommittee chairperson who holds a lot of power when it comes to the technology, the weaponry, the accessibility of anything that you want to do within the military. And he's housing all of these freaking mercenaries and, 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 and space pirates and all this alien tech and all this extra shit. And he's a force to be reckoned with. He's got a lot of influence. He can do a lot of damage. And um, I'm like, yeah, the Reds and Blues have to up the ante now, right? They went from saving their leaders to now saving an entire planet. Clearly, they're going to get their shit together, right? <laughs> Episode 2, I put it right here, The Adventures of Griff. Looking for fucking Kimball. Spent the whole episode going from post to post. Where's Kimball? Uh, we don't know right now. I'm trying to help these people with their weapons and their armor. Where's Kimball? I don't know. You weren't here at practice. Five laps, four laps, five laps, six laps until Griff decides to get his shit together. Where's Kimball? Oh, there you are. Why can't I get second to the mess hall? Bruh. <laughs> 
I liked it though. I, I kind of liked the setup of the episode overall because it kind of gave me a little bit of like what's everybody been up to since. And we did find out that a month has passed. So they're trying to ration munitions. They're trying to ration uh, food. They're trying to get everybody um, in tip top fighting shape for this war that's going to be sweeping everybody. And they're also trying to unite the Federalists with the New Republic because it's like, we have a common enemy now. We were never, we like, feds and new were the, were the same. Just like the reds and blues. Reds and blues are the same. Um, we got to turn our attention to the main threat. And even Doyle and Kimball aren't coming to, you know, aren't seeing eye to eye on something as simple as rationing munitions. But Doyle finds no problem with rationing food, which I understand Kimball's frustration in that regard. But uh, we got to see Matthews sucking up to Griff. Uh, we got Lopez and Simmons who are dis who are distributing weaponry. Uh, we got that one chainsaw dude, and that was a little funny bit. Uh, I love how they gave Donut like he's in charge of fashion of fashion statements, fashion sense. Uh, he's in charge of armor, so I just thought it was uh, appropriate. And I I think I've grown, I, dude. I've grown to love Donut so much over the course of the show. Uh, I'm so glad that he's back, right? Because he was gone. He he's been gone for a, a bit here and there between. Um, you know, I think it was between uh, at some point during Blood Gulch and then again after he got shot by Washington. He was just out for like one or two seasons. But uh, I don't know. I, I miss him. I love him. He's 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 like he's always the right amount of comedic value that whenever Donut's around, I know I'm going to get a, it's going to give me a, it's going to get a laugh out of me, essentially. And uh, yeah, I just love him. Love his personality. I love how just carefree and, and honest he is with everybody. I love the. You know, I love the gay jokes. I think those are really, uh, they kind of like tie into his personality. They tie into who he is, uh, whether he is homosexual or whether he's just enthusiastically honest. Um, either way, it's, I, I, if Donut's on screen, I love it. Um, I think he's awesome. Uh, and he's come a long way, especially. Uh, Washington training the recruits makes a lot of sense it's great to see them all kind of uh together unfortunately they're at the end of uh of griff's insistence on not training so they're like running laps and like losing their breath everyone besides Anders smith who seems like he's in tip-top fighting shape and then uh you had doyle and kimball we we see that they're still struggling to see eye to eye um but and it's crazy too because it's been about a month so i assume the war is going to be kicking off relatively soon um, I did like this one joke from, uh, from Griff. I did miss it during my reaction, but upon rewatching it again, I was like, oh, that's actually really clever. Hey, I know you guys are having a hard time playing nice, but there are bigger things at stake right now. Get out. Like steak, for instance. And then for the end of episode two, we had, uh... <sighs> Tucker and freaking Sarge flexing on the freaking space pirates. They're like, they, first off, they're singing copyrighted music, which I'm surprised they got away with that in this day and age on YouTube. But even if you're singing it, you can get in trouble by the bot. But uh, but yeah, like they're, they're back to um, basically reclaiming bases of the planet. And uh, Epsilon and Carolina are under, are trying to figure out like what more was Karan trying to do here? Because there's a lot of alien tech significance. We had that one alien ship uh, last season that we saw at Crash Site Alpha, we've had the space pirates running around with re reverse engineered, uh, like hybrid space tech with like alien machinery and human machinery hybrids. And now we we're seeing like all of these like floating structures and stuff like that. That proves that there's something more going on besides we just want this planet to have this planet. Like there's a, it seems that there's a lot of alien significance and, um, like advanced technology that that Karin wanted to get their hands on and that's where they make most of their money in uh weapons and uh like weapon development and stuff like that that was episode two episode three was kind of like i, I almost kind of pull episode two and three together because it's very red versus red and blue oriented uh the second half i actually enjoy too because i think dr gray is getting a lot of time to shine now and i love i love 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 um, Aaron Zek's performance of Dr. Gray. I, I prefer it much more than Blake. I know it, it's weird too, because it kind of seems like, in a way, it seems like the roles that the voice talent play in Red versus Blue is almost inversed completely uh, to what they play in Ruby. Like, m from Felix to Jean, from Carolina to Pira, from Dr. Gray to, uh, to Blake. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these are polar opposite character spectrums here in personality 
Um, I don't know what these characters look like in RVB because everyone has a mask on, everyone has like freaking armor on or whatever. But like, obviously, even even Carolina and uh, Pira kind of have similar similarities. Like, they're both redheads. They both have green eyes. They're both like fighting, um, you know, fighting talents. So yeah, I just I like that. I kind of like how like you go from a Felix to a Jean Arc. <laughs> You know, what I mean, especially season one, Jean Arc, like freaking Boy Scout for Christ's sake. But um, yeah, I, I just I love I I prefer this high strung, enthusiastic, uh, like crazy crazy mad scientist personality uh, and performance from Aaron. One hundred percent. I actually wish that. I, I, I don't know. I doubt she's an RVB at this point anymore, with the exception, obviously, she's still Blake and Ruby, but I don't really know what happens beyond Chorus uh, for RVB, so I don't really think we're going to be seeing much of or if any of Dr. Gray anymore, which is unfortunate, but um, I think Aaron's performance was probably the highlight of this batch of episode uh, of episode three for me at least because she comes into the picture they're like who do we know who has a lot of information about weapon technology and i was like the doctor and then boom the doctor shows up another thing that i really liked here again little shout out to project freelancer don't know if it's exactly uh who i think it is but they did mention that they recovered uh, a bubble shield and i immediately had to think of north dakota and theta from project freelancer because obviously i had to and carolina said oh we'll be back for that and the fact that epsilon has access to epsilon theta like the memories of epsilon theta and theta and north were like like they worked in tandem with the bubble shield i really hope we start seeing some of these crossover like i how do i word this I wonder if Epsilon's memories are only within Epsilon. Like, can he summon forth Theta to interact with anybody else? Or is it only Epsilon that can interact with his inner spliced Epsilon versions? You know what I mean? Because I guess the only other way that that would work is if he extracted them out the same way that he did uh epsilon texas but yeah i don't know i i really hope that like because that just gives a lot of potential i'm like we saw theta last season we got the bubble shield that's just like a recipe for nostalgia right there if you ask me um i don't really know if there's any other ai that can um that that are synonymous with like uh an armor ability if you will i know that carolina just needs an ai to work her armor enhancements whereas the 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 people of Cor uh the people of Caron don't even need an ai anymore which is insane but um but yeah i i think that that's super awesome i'm holding out on hope that we get to see that i don't really know if we see any more of the ai uh we didn't really get much of ada and iota at all actually like we saw them in season season 10 briefly when they were both uh a part of carolina and then both a part of the meta and then we saw them again in the last season when they were used to kind of mess with the um the accuracy uh of the weapons uh with uh with carolina and epsilon's little mission that they had together but yeah i don't know I i'm just hoping that th that we get a little bit more of stuff like that i think that'd be really awesome if not it's unfortunate for me at least because that's something that i really like to see and i'd love to get more theta and the rest of the uh epsilon fragments before whatever happens by the end of this not fragments but you know what i mean like the epsilon strands of the memories of these ai so blending in episode three with episode four obviously uh you know dr gray along with again i, I love how uh uh sarge mentioned like oh this is uh this is uh this is a job for the blue team which i feel like that's a little tongue-in-cheek joke to the fact that the blues always get the plot relevant relevant um uh the plot relevant screen time so he was like oh yeah this is definitely something for the blues and i'm like yeah no shit freaking it's tucker with the key and the key is gonna progress the plot with this alien stuff going on and all that stuff and um that got me thinking with the aliens involved we never found out what happened to junior right the last that we saw junior i think was when was at the end of season five when texas took on omega and omega Wait a minute, let me think about that. It was Omega, Texas, Junior. Was Cappy's body there too? Or was that at the crash site when the when the ship landed at uh, Outpost 17B? Because I know Texas's body was recovered there. Cause, but she's an AI, so that doesn't really matter. But I think that's the last that we... Yeah, cause, yeah because... Uh, the the frequency like the there was a radio signal there was like a rate i'm gonna i'll play it on screen but there was like a radio distress uh relay message when they made it to the crash site and 
like Texas was like, wait, what are you doing? And they jumped out of the ship before it crashed. So Junior never died. I don't know if we ever found out what happened to Cappy because apparently he got like resurrected or whatever. Um, and even then, I don't think that was him. Maybe that was just like uh, like alien or AI influence over him. I never really understood that personally, if anyone wants to explain that. But uh, but yeah, so Junior actually never died. He's I think he's MIA right now for the most part. Unless because I know that there were aliens in the uh, like now I'm really see this is the this is the uh, the downside to waiting so so long between watching RVB because now I'm really having to dig back into my memory. Memory is the key. But I remember in I think it was season seven. I think it was season seven or season eight when when Tucker got reintroduced and he had the sword. And uh, all those aliens were just like mesmerized by him. He was like, oh my gosh, you got, you're our leader. You know, I don't think Junior was a part of that. But then again, that was just establishing that aliens are a thing here. And there was alien tech on that desert island too. So, you know, there was stuff there. There's stuff on, on Chorus. So it's kind of scattered throughout the galaxy, uh, I think. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't really know if it's hard to... So I know the only thing that I do know is that the initial blue alien that I think had sex with Tucker that produced Junior, that alien died. I think it got like blown up in a, in like a spaceship or something and like one of the Banshee ships or whatever. I think that alien died, but Junior himself is still MIA. So I don't know if anyone wants to clear that up for me because I'm a little uh, scatterbrained on that because it's been, it's been so long since I watched anything pre-Project Freelancer. I think Project Freelancer is like the most ingrained in my mind. Like if I'm going to Blood Gulch Chronicles, that shit was like 2016 almost. But yeah, so I mentioned Junior because the sword's relevancy is insane. And it's crazy because Tucker has been the main character of the Chorus trilogy since season 11. Like season 11, it was all Tucker. Season 12, it was all Tucker. And now the sword is so important. And guess what? Tucker's the only one that can use it. And it's a key. Uh, and it's going to be Tucker again, which is insane. Um, we did get a little bit of moments that emphasized freckles as well. Like I love that he has full control of Caboose's. Like he basically turns Caboose's uh, rifle into like a safety mode, like confetti you know, confetti party going on with the with the freaking streamers and the music and the noise and all the confetti and all that stuff. But uh, Freckles is alive and well. He can scan for him. He has full control over the gun. That's awesome. Uh, I like the dynamic overall. Like, I don't ever think we've really had a situation where it was Tucker and Sarge. I mean, Emily Gray provides a lot of, like, banter and overall dynamic for the gang uh for this batch of episodes i love the little log that she had to gave a lot of her personality in that and before i forget like the best part of the episode one of the funniest moments and i i think they've done this before i'm pretty sure they tried replicating the uh uh you ever wonder why we're here between griff and simmons i think it was during i don't know if it was during blood gulch like a second time like towards the end of blood gulch i think it was like the finale batch of episodes for blood gulch or it was in the capture unit I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure they've done, they've tried to like reenact. You ever wonder why we're here? It's just classic. It's been so long and it's kind of like the mantra that started out the series overall. But holy shit, an alien sword from 10 seasons ago, like nine or 10 seasons ago, has newfound relevancy now. And its relevancy back then was very ominous because it mentioned that like, the great destroyer it'll be like a, a blue person will a, a blue you know someone known as the great destroyer who's blue is going to be is going to bring about the destruction of all yeah, of everything the end is nigh so what i'm actually trying to grasp right now and think about is the blue alien from like season three season four i think it was season three or see it, it was one of those two seasons i don't remember which one but that blue alien was dubbed the Great Destroyer. And I'm wondering now if contextually with the plot that's going on, Tucker's key is the key. T Tucker's sword is the key. So I wonder if that alien traveled from Chorus or somewhere around this part of the galaxy to wherever the reds and blues were back then to get this sword, which was the key, to then go back and unlock these alien vaults 
to bring about the great destruction as the prophecy once intended, right? The blue alien, it was supposed, but Tucker's blue and Tucker has the sword now. So what if the prophecy was never the alien, but the prophecy was always prophesized that a blue person that holds the sword would be the key to salvation or destruction. It was never the alien, it was Tucker. And by virtue of this episode, it kind of seems like the prophecy is coming true. The sword was always the key. It's regarding earlier season relevance, which again, coincides with giving this potential and this opportunity to Tucker for further character development because he's the only one that can use the sword. He's the only one that can have direct relevancy with the aliens. His kid's an alien and his kid might actually be out there and be relevant this season, which again, more relevance of the past being brought into the present. So Junior can make a return. What the hell was that red alien AI? Like, I, I don't know what that was. I don't know if the aliens have their own. And like, and I'm not, I'm not saying, okay, so hold, full stop. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that the alien computer AI is equivalent to that of a smart AI. That could be a dumb AI for all we know. But nonetheless, it's intriguing that these, I mean, these aliens are and like fucking advanced as fuck. They're super sophisticated. I wouldn't be surprised if they have their own artificial intelligence. But yeah, like the aliens have their own AI, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that means Epsilon is gonna be uh, involved in terms of interacting with these AI. We also have Sheila, who who's another AI. Again, I don't think she's a smart AI. I think she's I don't want to say she's a dumb AI because she's pretty fucking smart. <laughs> Double entendre there. But I, I just mean like, I, I feel like she is significant to the degree of like doing tasks and things like that and being an assistant. Um, unlike Al Alpha kind of did that too, but he was way more sophisticated in terms of being um, based off of a person. So I don't think Sheila's based off of a person. I don't think this AI is based off of another alien. Um... But yeah, so Tucker's sword activates the tower, or the, the, the temple, as the soldiers called it. Temple activates, awakens all of the alien technology on the planet. Um, so the the, pol the plasma rifle that Donut had when he was, like, being D Frank D Franklin Delano Donut on the case, you know? And then freaking Tucker also freaking role-playing, like, come on, dude, you're a freaking soldier. Stop, stop acting like a, chi a petulant child during a war. But, um... But yeah, so like that activates, it awakens everything. We get this fucking crazy demonic alien voice. Don't know what the hell it's saying, but like doesn't sound good. Tucker responds with, what's up? And and like all the alien technology, they're like, I feel like the initial greeting was like, you ha who have awoken me, you shall now be blessed by the power of the alien race. And then they give them all of the alien tech, the alien weapons, and then he just disrespects them by saying, yo, sir, dude. <laughs> like, sir, bro. And then he's just like, I'm taking all my toys, I'm getting the fuck out of here, you don't deserve it. And then they, 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 they like, it relate a map. So I wonder if we're literally just going to be going to a bunch of different alien temples and unlocking them. Don't know what the aliens are all about. I don't know if there are any aliens present in the galaxy or if this is like a, a, a relay beacon that's going to ping these aliens to come here and then they're just going to fuck your shit up. And it's not even going to be about Chorus. It's not even going to be about Charon or the Reds and Blues or the freaking Federalist or the New Republic. It's just going to be about general survival because these aliens are going to completely and utterly fuck your shit up. So... I don't know what the map is about. I assume the map is going to lead to another alien uh, facility. But again, I can't get out of my head the alien prophecy from season three. Miles is doing such an incredible job at bringing relevancy to things of the past. Project Freelancer, Sharkface, and now the fucking sword from seasons ago, arcs ago at this point that had no semblance of relevancy at this point and it seems like that's what they're doing which makes me incredibly excited because uh i'm probably gonna go back and rewatch that batch to kind of really pick up what gary was talking about when he mentioned like the great destroyer i, I don't know if he was i don't think he was playing jokes on that it because like even even the alien you know what i mean like the the blue alien i don't know what they called uh crunch bite oh my god dude holy shit i haven't remembered his name in forever until just now crunch bite oh my god yeah i completely forgot about him dude that just took me back <laughs> crunch bite yep 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 so that's who it was it was crunch bite that that initially kind of was 
prophesized. But that 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 could be an outlier. You could have two characters, you know, you had the blue alien, you got the blue soldier named Tucker. You got the sword that if either one of them got it, I think the prophecy would have come true, but I think the prophecy's true description was describing Tucker and it wasn't describing then, it was describing now. Fuck, dude, we are fucked. <sighs> but what a great batch of episodes. <laughs> I am so, 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 so excited uh, for season 13 now more than ever just because I've gotten I've gotten a little taste test of, uh, of what I'm in store for. I'm pretty sure this review portion has been like an hour long. I can only imagine how long uh, this batch is going to be. I'm also recording these. Uh, I'm trying to record these uh, in bulk in advance because at the time that these are probably going up, I think I'm in Canada right now visiting my girlfriend because we've been apart we we started dating shortly before covid took off and started becoming an issue uh the last time i saw her was february 2020 so we have been apart for over a year and a half we haven't seen each other um and uh, it's been kind of tough for us so i'm going to be visiting her for about a month so i'm trying to get as much of this recorded as possible i don't know honestly i'll probably tweet out something to let you guys know like my progress being made that i'm actually watching and reacting to these i don't know if i'm gonna record there or if i'm just gonna stay there be there with her uh, meet her family for the first time take in canada i'm gonna be there for i think about a month and uh and kind of reassess my options um, and maybe pick up where I left off when I get back, but I'm definitely going to try to finish, um, maybe before I go or try to make some progress and then pick up where I left off when I get back, but I don't want to upload anything with the intention of stopping. So unfortunately I might have to hold you guys off a little bit more by the time these come out. But once these are out, once you are seeing these, they will be coming out consistently. Uh, I can at least guarantee that. So, um, yeah, that's everything. Oh my God. This season is shaping up to be great. The first episode was incredible. Um, episodes three and four, again, very red versus blue at its core. Um, and I, and I like that, you know what I mean? I don't I don't want them to just forget about the reds and the blues and just focus on, you know, the Federalist and the new Republic and car on industries and the freeland. I feel like everything will blend very well, especially with this being the finale in a trilogy uh, i think they've carried over the overall plot very well with how it started uh with the middle section of the all the big revelations and the overall um kind of like plot twist of who the real uh you know who the real enemy is and uh i think season 13 is going to be fantastic i can't even imagine how things are going to fare off with all of these winding threads that are coming together and um and are going to be super dynamic to kind of break down and digest i feel like my reviews are going to be just as investive just as long just as in-depth as uh they were back during project freelance i was doing like two three hour videos a week not to mention my recording and editing time so uh, i'm just going to try to do my absolute best but i just want you guys to know that i am so excited to be back um, this first batch of episodes has me so thrilled to pick up where I left off and see this trilogy to the end at the very least. Uh, I'm always going to be watching RVB despite people's interest or where people fell off. And maybe some people will continue to watch RVB beyond where they might have stopped uh, with my reactions to kind of see my overall thoughts of how the show trans uh, transitions and how or how it changes or how the plot deviates or what the new storylines are going to be or anything like that. But overall, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts, my theories, my reactions, my speculations, and everything else in between as we get into the next batch of episodes. Um, as always, thank you for the overall support. Leave your thoughts in the comment section, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care.